Hey guys, welcome to another Quaternix Corner Live. Hey Mark, <laughs> glad How you could join us there, buddy. All right. How's everybody uh, out there? Welcome everybody. I see we got quite a few people in the chat room already, so welcome. Glad you guys showed up. Um, hope everybody's doing well. We've got a great show lined up for you guys tonight. Uh, joining us is Mark from the Little Rochelle Farm. Mark, welcome to the channel. <laughs> uh, you know, today we we're going nice to be... Topic. Exactly. Today we're going to be talking about culling, dispatching, and different methods for humanely dispatching your quail. Um, but as always, I do need to run through some couple of announcements real quick. A uh, big shout out to our sponsors, Southwest Game Birds and Hatching Time. Uh, Southwest Game Birds will offer a 10% off coupon code if you use the uh, coupon code Caternix Corner during checkout. Um, over on their website, which is southwestgamebirds.com. You can pretty much apply that to any order. Uh, also, Hatching Time. You visit them at hatchingtime.com. They've got a lot of great uh, equipment, pretty much everything that you'd need for poultry. Uh, and they have also donated a $50 gift certificate uh, that we're going to be giving away to one lucky winner. Um, and also, Southwest Game Birds is giving away a 30-count of hatching eggs they are um, what are they range and scarlet celadon layers so for those of you who like the uh, celadon eggs there's a chance to win that uh, Northwest quail farm has also donated uh, your choice of a water system uh, automatic nipples or the quail egg carton starter pack so we'll be uh, selecting a winner uh, later on in the show I do want to give a shout out to our moderators. I think I saw a few of you guys in there. Uh, Anna from Dirty South uh, Homesteads in the house, and also, 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 where'd she go? I know she's in here. Um, Amber, <laughs> sorry, Amber. I know, I know you're in there somewhere. I seen you earlier before we went live. So uh, welcome them. I don't know if uh, Henriette was able to make it tonight or not. She said they were having, yeah, there's Amber right there. They said she was having some issues uh, with power out there. So Terry, is that the one that took my gig? Who? Amber? Yeah. Either Amber or Anna, one of them guys took your spot. <laughs> oh, that's, that's just too bad, Terry. <laughs> Uh, I wish I'd, lo I'd love to be able to moderate this show, but unfortunately, you know what I do yeah. almost every Busy day man. of the week now, so it's a little difficult. Busy man. Yep. So, okay. Um, what else am I wanting to talk about? Oh, big thing coming up, guys. Uh, the Caternix Kids Proje Project or Program, um, where we select a winner each month. Uh, basically, what the uh, kids do is. Uh, they come up with a project where they can help people or you know do some type of chores or whatever and then write up a little story about what they did maybe submit some video and whatnot and we choose a, a winner every month um, originally that was going to be chosen on the 12th of July but we bumped it up it's going to now be on the well it'll be next week's show um, also Chris from slightly red was supposed to be on next week but he had something come up and he can't make it till the 12th. So I just kind of swapped those two around. So uh, for those of you who have children who are interested, they want to, um, you know, get into that program. I've ha already had a lot of uh, submissions, um, but we're going to continue to take more. And if, you're, if your kid wasn't chosen on this month's, um, we keep the submissions in. And so they could be, you know, selected in future months or in next couple months uh, let's see what else do we got to talk about here um, oh, the, the prizes the kids are going to win a Barado incubator uh, the Lumia 8 hatching time has donated a pair of side-by-side -side cages uh, the layer cages uh, they're gonna get some hatching eggs they're gonna get a starter quail egg pack incubite candler a bunch of other things uh, also if you guys are if your kids are interested in hatching out chickens Mark has donated, um, how many Mark is it, eight? Uh, whatever, what, you're sending out the Lumia eight, right? Yeah, so it'll be eight eggs. 
So eight. So I might send out, I don't know, 10 or 12, because some might get broken in shipping. You never know. Okay, just to right. give them a little, some extras. That's all. And what kind of eggs are those? Uh, French black copper mares. There you go. Okay. So those so are the nice chocolate, chocolate egg layers that uh, some people like to have. They have the feathered feet sure. and all that stuff. So they're, they're, yeah. that's my preferred breed. And that's what I, uh, I breed besides uh, the quail. Sure. So that's another option, you know, for your, your kids. If they win, they can either get the quail eggs or they can, they can go with the chicken eggs. So that is pretty cool. And I appreciate that, Mark. Um, also, let's see if I can pull this up real quick. I just want to give a, a quick plug to the Caternix Corner website. Um, site's growing fast, guys. We've got a lot of great people over there. Um, there's stuff going on every day. It's, this is basically the, uh, we call them spaces over there, but they're actually group pages. And there's just a whole bunch of different topics, so you can apply to the groups that you, uh, for the topics that you're interested in. Uh, also, the Caternix Corner Library, uh, which is a repository of educational articles, videos. Um, we've got instructional videos, educational videos, review videos, stuff like that. And for those of you who are buying and selling uh, farm products, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, Caternix related. Um, you see we've got like chicks, we've got hatching eggs, we've got goats, chickens, um, supplies and whatnot. Check out uh, ccfarmmarket.com uh, and uh, you can get registered over there uh, and post on there. Let me get back to my other page there. So I think that's about it for the announcement. So we can go ahead, uh, Mark, if you're ready, we can jump right into our topic of the day and uh, get the show rolling. Absolutely. So why don't why don't you tell them a little bit about what we're what we're going to be talking about today and uh, why? All right, Terry. Uh, I know it's not a lot of people don't like to do this. A lot of people do struggle in uh, in dispatching their birds or calling their birds, but I think everybody looks at it as fun and games. And uh, as with almost every good comes a bad. Uh, and when you have a sick bird or injured bird, you have to be able to take care of that bird somehow. And there's nothing wrong with taking them to the vet or having a friend do it uh, or doing it yourself, but everybody that has quail should have a plan in place so that animal doesn't suffer needlessly waiting for you to figure something out. And I think this should be done before uh, people even purchase their quail or get their first set. Uh, okay. And tonight we're just going to show you some... Basically, you're not going to need anything beside your hands, Terry, and uh, it'll go and show you how to, uh, to dispatch those quail, and uh, mm -hmm. whether it be for meat for your freezer, which a lot of people do that, or uh, for falconry, um, which is you'll see on the uh, thoracic compression method that basically last week I just figured that out or was shown to me mm -hmm. by my falconer. That's how he dispatches. So I reached out to you immediately and uh, said, you know, check this out. I think it's very, uh, it's a very, oh boy, how can I say this without getting uh, <laughs> efficient, <laughs> yeah, very, yes, efficient, very efficient way of dispatching the quail. Yep. Um, and maybe, maybe it'll help somebody uh, yep. on their end if they're having a hard time with the uh, uh, decaptation or whatever. Uh, this yep. is, uh, this is my little farmer over here. You want to say hi, bud? Hi. How All you right. doing, buddy? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna. He's not the one that does the filming for me. That's my older one, and my kids are all involved in this, so they have seen every aspect from beginning to end. Cool. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. Do you want to play the video, or uh, did I? Uh, did I got I a few other things first. On why? Um, we got a few other things I want to go over real quick first. Um, can you name some of the uh, opportunities where people might be required to dispatch the quail? You know, like you already mentioned one, the falconry. Yeah, I've got the falconry. Believe it or not, I actually have a, another individual that wants the birds, uh, usually for butchering, I will use scissors and just remove the head of the bird uh, over the bucket, let it bleed out. But I've had a customer reach out to me and they want, um, they want, the head attached. So I was coming up with a, I was trying to figure out a method to do that. 
and I was not familiar with the CO2 and the cervical dislocation is hard to keep the muscles intact to have it presentable once everything's removed and the thoracic compression pretty much solved that problem for me and now will allow me to fulfill those orders uh, and that would be I don't know any any place maybe reptile uh, feeders uh, sure. also falconry is a is a big one but the falconry person that does buy for me did say that the reason he does not personally like the cervical dislocation is because they want the actual falcons or the birds of prey to work at tearing away the meat uh, and apparently it's some type of exercise for them and uh, when you do the cervical dislocation you're basically dislocating the neck and tearing those muscles and releasing that and the head's almost the only thing really holding it is just about the skin sure. so and uh, the thoracic compression takes care of that also okay um what about uh for like health and disease you know birds that uh yeah i mean if, you know, if people get something. sick birds what are you what are you going to do with that sick bird you're just going to sit there and watch it die which i think is cruel as yeah. a as someone who has animals you don't want to see anything suffer so as the owner or the keeper of that animal you need to uh, uh take care of it immediately uh like I said, it's all about having a plan in place, and I hope that what we're showing tonight, while I take no pride in dispatching any birds, it's just the fact of farming and having them. Yeah, it's, um, it's part of keeping I hope, I hope it gives people an idea, or some ideas, or alternative methods to go ahead and dispatch their quail and, uh, and any potential suffering or uh, putting meat in their freezer also. Exactly. Um, okay, we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to demonstrate two different uh, types of of culling or dispatching: uh, bloodless method and the blood cull. Can you kind of explain those real quick? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? I had some uh, bypassers in the background here. <laughs> uh, tonight we're going to be talking about two two different methods of uh, of culling or dispatching birds: the bloodless method and yep. the blood cull. Can you explain a little bit about both of them? Yeah, uh, well, the blood call most of the time will be removing the head itself. Be it, uh, I believe you're going to end up showing a, mm -hmm. uh, a nice little gadget that's mounted that'll help people. I think you, it's the quail pop. Quail I, pop is that the yes. name of it? It is. And uh, that'll remove the head, and then you can immediately turn the bird upside down and let it bleed out. Uh, I personally use shears when I butcher for meat for myself, uh, and that's done over a bucket, and I let that bleed out. Mm -hmm. uh, which I think when you're you're butchering for meat or for consumption, that's really how you want to do it. But the other ways are the bloodless call, where you essentially you call that bird and you don't see any blood and the skin is all intact. The bird is uh, uh, complete. There's no missing parts, no no head loss or anything. Okay. Um, I think that's about it, Mark. We can go ahead and run the videos. And then jump and, right into the chat room. And another thing too, um, I did see uh, Kiki mentioned something about suffering birds, uh, an injured bird also. It does yes, happen. Uh, yep. They get they, they get injured jumping around. Uh, yep. And if you see a bird in distress, it's up to you to uh, to end that suffering. I'm Absolutely. not a big fan of the. I guess some people do hospital wards, but when you see a bird that's been scalped pretty bad. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not a pretty comforting feeling for that bird. So um, there's nothing wrong with consuming it. That would be my recommendation. Uh, I agree. And this is a method that hopefully helps you. Okay. All right, guys. Um, we, Me and Mark put together a short video um, showing the different uh, methods of dispatching quail. Um, I do want to say... Uh, for those of you who may be a little bit squeamish um, or this is a sensitive topic, um, you can, you know, turn your head or take a break for, I think it's like a four or five minute video, so it's not real long. Um, but also, guys, if you have any questions uh, that you would like to ask, uh, go ahead and get them uh, typed up and put in the chat room now. Don't forget to put the letter Q in front of your question so we can find it and uh, we will get to it right after the video. So remember, guys, for those of you who don't want to see this, uh, turn, it, turn it off right <laughs> Turn <now>. away. <laughs> All right. Hello, folks, and uh, welcome. Uh, Mark here on the Larshell Farm. Uh, I just want to give everybody fair warning that I will be dispatching quail. So if that's something you're not comfortable watching, please turn it off. 
uh, and skip it completely. Uh, but for those who you, of you that may like to learn a different method of dispatching your quail, uh, a bloodless method, um, I hope this helps you. Uh, it's helped me on my quail journey here. I had a falconer who purchases his, uh, his feeders from me show it. And something I learned, so I figure I'm going to share it with you as well. Uh, I hope, I don't know how I should articulate that. I hope that uh, this is easier for someone to dispatch their quail because I know a lot of people have a hard time with it. I take no pleasure in doing this at all, but it is something and uh, it's a reality that when people do do this and raise quail, you will likely have a sick or injured bird uh, that needs to be dispatched. Same thing with your extra meals. So you need to have a plan in place and how you're going to go about doing that. Uh, I'm going to grab a mail here. Again, please shut the video if you don't want to see any of this. I'm going to grab a mail and I'll show you how it's done. So on these birds in the belly area, right about where the color changes here, you're going to feel there's a little bump there. If you go lower, you feel like a sharp point. You don't want to go there. You want to go higher, right about where that bump is. And then you're going to have the spine in the back. What you're going to be doing is taking this and just compressing your fingers together. Uh, I, I hold the bird with two hands. I hold the wings down. I place my finger on the back and the spine area. I find that bump with my thumb and I just compress together. And this bird is dispatched. Lost consciousness and that's it. You're not breaking any bones. Uh, I just hold it here for a little bit, but I can feel the bird is doing the twitching in my hands and you can see that bird is not conscious at all. Very fast, very effective. Um, and it's my understanding that the feeders, they like to have all the muscles intact so that um, the birds of prey can actually work harder while tearing away at the meat. Apparently it's some type of exercise. I'm not familiar, that's just how it was explained to me. So I'm here sharing my knowledge with you. This one's right good. underneath the breastbone. Or right on the breastbone. Bird loses conscious almost immediately. Yeah. And that's a, another method of bloodless call. All right, folks, uh, you just seen the chest compression method or the thoracic uh, compression method of dispatch that I showed you. I'm going to show you one more method of bloodless call. Um, this is what I had been using before. And what happens is, uh, I'll just take the uh, bird air here to go over it real quick. Okay, what happens is uh, when I do the cervical dislocation is it has a tendency on younger birds that um, the skin will tear as you pull. So on, on older birds, it's not really an issue. Um, or if you pull too hard, you can remove the head. That's also a uh, downfall with that method. Um, but it is also another very effective way of dispatching your quail. Um, again, it's quick, but I have noticed there's definitely a lot more uh, internal bleeding with this method. So what you're gonna do is grasp the bird firmly. Uh, you're gonna take this hand, put it underneath the beak, take the thumb, put it behind the head. Then you're gonna extend the head. And then as you extend a little more, you're gonna take and pinch together. Uh, and that's gonna be the cervical dislocation. So you're gonna extend, pinch, and that bird is dispatched. So that there is, uh, that's again, that's uh, another method of doing it. Um, the twitching, don't worry about that. The bird is gone. There's nothing to it. That's just nerve movement at that point. That is also a very effective way of dispatching um, your animals. But with this method, you could see the bird is still shaking. Now it's dead. There's no doubt about it. But with the thoracic compression, one thing I've noticed is that there's a lot less movement in the bird and it's almost like the bird loses consciousness before the passing um, versus this. I guess you could say it's a form of blood, uh, blunt force trauma uh, that causes it. But not that there's any feeling. Again, um, I don't take any pleasure, but you do need to know how to dispatch your animals if you're gonna have quail. I hope this helped. I'll give you one quick look again on how it's done. Come on in, May. Uh, 
on the uh, dead bird this time. I take you take your finger underneath the beak, your head on top, extend, and then once it's ex fully extended out, before you go any further, you're going to pinch down and pull. I like to take it and twist up at the same time, uh, and that is pretty much it. I hope this helped. Uh, and now you at least have two methods of dispatch that you could find yourself uh, using whichever one you're comfortable with. Basically, you just mount uh, this thing using a couple screws, mount it to a, a post or uh, like I've got it here on the side of my aviary because this is where I normally sit when I do my butchering. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab a bird and I have not used this device before. I'm just going by the directions uh, that he gave to me when he said it. So basically you just put the, the bird's head in the device and then with a quick snap and a pull, we just dislocated the bird's neck. So you can see this bird is, is put down uh, and now I can go ahead and use this bird uh, for sales to, to some of my people who like a whole bird to feed to reptiles and whatnot. Okay, and the last method that I want to demonstrate is not a bloodless cull. Um, this is probably the most widely used method um, when preparing your birds for butchering, and that is by decapitating the bird. Uh, there are two ways you can do it. You can either do it by hand by just, you know, pulling the head off. Um, or using the quail pop, you can do it that way. I like to use a set of really sharp shears. These are Cutco Model 77. They're a little bit expensive, but they do a really nice job, and it's quick and painless for the bird. Okay, so basically what you want to do is get the shears positioned at the base of the neck, and with one quick snip, the head is removed. Uh, this is also good for allowing the bird to bleed out uh, prior to skinning them. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> um, that was a rough few minutes, Terry. Yeah, we, we handled it, no problem. Um, I do want to say something about the uh, thoracic uh, compression. I butchered, uh, I think, 21 birds yesterday, and I tested out that, and it worked really well. I mean, it's um, I, I'm definitely going to use it when I have to put down birds. I'll probably stick to my same old, uh, you know, decapitation method when I'm butchering but um, I, I wanted to test it out and uh, it was pretty much painless I mean I, I was surprised at how little I had to compress to get them to fall asleep you know I thought I thought I was gonna have to compress right down to the spine but it wasn't necessary you don't you don't break any bones Terry it's right. not like you're crushing the bird um, should I Terry, should I go into that story I was telling you or no? No, I'm Absolutely. not, I'm not going to do that. Remember that no. uh, about me being a kid and doing it? Yeah. Because I'm not going to give anybody any ideas. So <laughs> I, was, I don't know if you recall what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. Uh, okay. And that's do fine, too. Do you think that that's something wanna... I should talk about or no? Yeah, it's not going to hurt anything. Go ahead. I, I think it's on the same principle as this. Sorry, that, it doesn't pertain to quail. Um, and this is maybe why I'm the way I am a little bit. I don't know. Uh, but when we were... When we were kids, talk about not having time to do stuff. We would basically put ourselves against the wall, take a deep inhale, and someone else would take their hands, I'm trying to get it like this, and push right here against our chest. And within a matter of seconds, we would pass out. Mm -hmm. So, and then we would do it on something soft where we would land. But this, as soon as he showed me this, and I did this method, it reminded me immediately back to that time. Uh, so that's, I figured I would share that and that's how, uh, that's what made me think of it anyways. So what do you think is actually going on when you're doing the thoracic compression? What exactly I is think, going on and putting down the bird? I saw while the video was playing, I did see some of the comments also. I think what's happening is you're not actually breaking the spine, but you're, you're stopping the flow on the spine. You are also pushing on the heart and the lungs instantly together so you you immediately cut the blood flow and the oxygen flow to the brain instant mm -hmm. but you've done it in a way that you didn't cause any trauma so did you notice you said you did it yesterday i'm glad i, I didn't know that until now 
Did you notice that the birds twitch far less oh, yeah. than even the decapitation or yep. the bloodless call method of uh, uh, snapping the neck? Yeah, it, it was um, like they fell asleep in my hand. Yeah, Absolutely, so I actually think the bird loses consciousness and then the actual, um, uh, what am I passing. looking for here? The death, the death passing, occurs, yeah. the passing, <laughs> there you go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Kiki remembers that dumb game. <laughs> oh, so that explains a lot for her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, if you guys uh, have any questions uh, for Mark or me, go ahead and uh, you know type them in the chat room now. Don't forget to type the letter Q. And how are you doing on time tonight, Mark? Are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I just okay. had some company leave. That's why I had some. Uh, I, okay. Well, like you know, I was rushing a little bit before the show, but uh, yeah, I hear you. I'm good. Uh, and I did see a lot of good questions coming up and some questions that uh, don't forget to remind me to talk about the length of time, Terry. Um, and I believe we're going to go across that uh, in some of the questions that I saw go by. You can do that right now if you want. Okay. Uh, don't forget, folks, and the reason I'm bringing this up now is because I saw it in some of the uh, questions. Someone asked, uh, I believe along the lines of how do you know the bird has passed or um, how do you know it's dead? What I do when I'm doing it, like I told you, Terry, I hold the bird like I showed in the video, and I keep pushing slowly with pressure until the bird passes out. At that point, that bird loses consciousness, you've not broken any bones, and continue to hold there for a while. Mm -hmm. You'll have stopped the oxygen and the blood flow, um, and after you've held it, I don't know, you'd have to count back in the video. <clears throat> I'm not sure, 15 seconds maybe? Yeah, if that. Um, and I saw someone ask about uh, the bird reviving, if they've ever revived or how do you know it's passed. Um, I've never had a bird revive. Um, and actually the falconer, when he was doing uh, it also, he said the same thing. Now I wouldn't try it. He did say something about on ducks and chickens and stuff. I don't think I would go that route. It's just right. such a big chest cavity that your hand compared to the size of a whale is a lot different then the pressure yep. you're going to apply to a duck or a chicken. So I, I don't, I've never tried it and I won't because I'm not in the business of uh, trying to injure animals for uh, just the sake of it, let's say. I've got other methods that I use for that. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and jump in the chat room. Uh, Transmedia PD is in the house, says hello all, 10 minutes to show time. My quail are arriving next month. Uh, so very interested in this topic. Yeah, I agree. Um, this is definitely a topic that Everyone that's you know interested or serious about keeping quail, you really need to, you know, understand and know how to put your birds down humanely. I don't know anybody, and I've reached out to quite a few people. Only one person um, behind the scenes replied back that they were aware of this method. I don't know of any yeah. other people that Not have known or seen this method before. So, like I said, yeah. this is only about a week old for me, and uh, it's a learning experience. The whole quail journey is. So as soon as I brought it up, I said, Terry, what do you think of this? And uh, we bounced back and forth and you said, hey, let's do a show on it. I mean, it, it's a must have for any quail keeper. I think so too. Okay, Trista says, good evening from New Hampshire. Glad you could join us. John Chapel says, looks like I'll have to catch up later since the supervisory staff said dinner in 30 minutes, but I'll catch it when I can, okay? Uh, Hazy, Bee Honey, Hazy Bees Honeys in the house. David Smith, uh, hello from Central Missouri. Shauna Rush says hello from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Michael Lexer, Lexler says hello from uh, Southern Louisiana. Amber M's in the house says hello everyone from Oregon. We finally got some of y'all's heat out here. Yeah, we're, we're at a steady miserable zone right now for all this uh, today was week. beautiful here we well, had a hot spell this weekend but today was 70s it was i mean just a beautiful day uh, i don't even want to hear it <laughs> 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 we're, we've we're been in the mid 90s all week and we're calling for it all this week too so yeah dirty south homesteads in the houses hey y'all from hot and muggy central alabama fish hunt traps is hello from jacksonville alabama uh, Dirty South Home said, don't forget the thumbs up. Absolutely. Kiki's in the house, says hello everyone. Jalopy Guy says hello everyone is, hello everyone is great today. Hope everyone is great today. Can't even read. 
Rita Payne says hello from Boonville, Indiana. Kiki says hot Houston, Texas is here. Where's Rev? <laughs> Lisa says hello from San Diego. Essentially Kimberly says hi from sweltering Arizona. I like all these different uh, descriptions of the heat. <laughs> sweltering, you know, blazing. Jennifer Chick says hello from Maine. Sassafras Farms in the house says hi. That's not far from me. No. Um, Sass, oh, I already got that one. Iva Hines says, "What well, percent will my eggs be okay?" I don't know what you're talking about, Iva. Humidity or temperature? Hopefully they will. Kevin says, "Yellow from Georgia." Scott says, "Hello, Terry and all from South Georgia." Missy Rabbit's in the house, says hello. Joy, no Joy Noel says hello from Kentucky. It's finally cooling off a bit from the recent heat wave. I think we'll get rain here soon. Haven't had any in two weeks. Yeah, I hear you. Transmediapedia says, question. I'm just curious, does it matter that my YouTube name does not match my Caternus Corner Facebook and website name? Also, thanks for all you do and share the information. No, absolutely not. Doesn't matter. Jenny says uh, hello from Washington State. Kevin Moss is in the house. Says hello from Athen Athens, Georgia. Matt's Vlogs in the house. Says hi, Terry. How's everyone today or everyone's day? We're doing good over here, Matt. Thank you. Um, essentially, Kimberly says mine doesn't match either. Yeah, it doesn't matter, guys. If you're talking about um, being selected for a prize um, for one of the giveaways, uh, it's the name we use is the name that you commented over on uh, the Facebook page or on the Caternix Corner website. Uh, Matt's Vlog says, getting my quail eggs tomorrow. Very excited. Congratulations. Good luck on their hatch. Brian Simon says, sweet. Shelly says, hey there. Shelly from Central Florida. Cassiopeia is in the house. Says, hello. Hey, Cassie, how are you? Uh, Hatchingtime.com. Thank you, uh, Anna. Iron Man Concrete Pumping says, great to be here from sunny, hot AF, but don't hold it against me, commie California. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, and Dirty South Homestead also put up Southwest Game Birds web address. Uh, Angel says, hello from northern Mississippi. Before we go any further, Mark, you are going to post uh, those videos that you took on your YouTube channel, correct? Yes, the, the video, I have not posted it, uh, saved it for the show tonight. Uh, okay. Right after the show here, I will make it public on my YouTube channel. Um, okay. So anybody between your site and my site, uh, they should have pretty good access to the videos. Right. And what's, what's the name of your channel? The La Rochelle Farm. You're going to have to look on the spelling. <laughs> the La Rochelle Farm. Uh, uh, wait, no, it's just the La Rochelle Farm on YouTube. That's all. Yep. I don't have a website, so. Okay. Uh, infection prevention says hi Mark and Terry excited for the topic tonight because this is a necessary part of homestead success and I'm trying to learn a method that will work for me absolutely I agree 100 percent you Mark say that again I'm sorry your thoughts on her comment uh, can you put it back up I'm sorry nope you I can't remember it. there <laughs> <laughs> excited for the topic today because this is a necessary uh, necessary part of homestead success Absolutely. Uh, and that's not just, that doesn't just pertain to quail, any animal. I mean, yep. if you're raising livestock, especially, um, if you're going to start taking a quail to the vet, what are you going to leave it there with? A hundred, hundred and fifty dollar vet bill for a quail yeah. that can exactly. be re replaced for five bucks, maybe. Um, it's not that you're doing anything bad by not going to the vet, but you need to have some way of taking care of that animal. And if taking care of it means dispatching, then that's what needs to be done. I agree. Uh, Don says, hi from Central Illinois. My Southwest Game Bird Jumbos are hatching today, day 18. Congratulations. Kiki says, hi, Anna. Sharon says, hello from Florida. Amber M says, ha ha, yep, I'm here. Glad you can make it. Kiki says, hi, Amber. Uh, Dirty South Home says, catch Northwest Quail Farm on Caternix Corner. 
Facebook.com. That's our website. Yes, they are a member over there. Also, um, uh, Michael from Southwest Game Birds is over on that website. So if you've got any questions for him, you can catch him there. Pappin Homestead says hello from Kissimmee, Florida. Um, Kiki says Rev, behave. Eric Lockyer says hey from Florida. Um, I don't know if Heidi in VR. I don't know what VR is. Um, I finally have quail. I got 30 eggs, Southwest Game Birds, because I wanted about seven, and I was told to expect about 25%. I got 27, and they are three weeks old. I'm drowning in quail. Uh, very good. Little Ridge Farm says, Mark, it's hard to mod when we live busy lives during the summer. That's for sure. I agree. Amanda Murphy says, hello from Missouri. Victoria Henderson, howdy from Maryland. Tim Wilson says, it's almost impossible to get local quail eggs in Sacramento. Oh, huh. I didn't know that. Cooking Sherry's in the house says, good evening. Uh, Dirty South Home said, said and I'll, I'll send Easter eggs. Yeah, I forgot about that. Sorry about that, Anna. Um, Anna is also um, donating uh, for the winner of the Caternix Kids Project. Um, she'll send you guys Easter eggs, chicken eggs. Um, they lay the various colors of Easter eggs. So you guys have, now you have three choices of what you want. Quail eggs or two different types of chickens. Uh, Michael Lexler says, love Facebook. See no, that's that's French Black Copper Marins. That's the abbreviations for it, Terry. See, if you of were course. in the chicken world, you would know this stuff. <laughs> I don't do chickens anymore. <laughs> oh, you just insulted maybe a few members on here. Just saying. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Eddy says, hi, everyone from Ohio. Uh, Mary, I Actually, I had a chance to get pigeons today. One of my buddies yeah. that buys a lot of quail from me called me up. He says he's got a bunch of uh, tumblers, and uh, he wanted to see if I wanted any, but I don't need those right now either. Uh, Mary Howard says, good evening from North Olympic, Pennsylvania, a peninsula of Washington State. Glad you can make it, Mary. Uh, essentially, Kimberly says, I just joined the Facebook site. Okay, great. GIS Herp says, monitoring from Birmingham, just got home in time for the show. Glad you can make it. Amber says, I'm just lucky I work for myself on my own farm and can set aside the time to be here. And I do appreciate you being here. I have the black copper marons too. Uh, they're great hens. I love my blue copper marons as well. What a great option. Cool. Gay says, hello from Colorado. Not talking to me, not talking to me. Jared Morrison says, hello, everyone from Texas. Kiki says, Muddy is painting and B is camping. They both send love. Okay. I know. I don't know who B is, but I do know who Muddy uh, is. Nabiki. Oh, Nabiki. Okay, now I know yeah. who it is. She, she's now uh, she's not off the grid until her house gets completed. Yeah, I heard she, she was she moving. Actually, she's moved up north now. Right, yeah, I heard that. Uh, Dirty South Home says, says, culling a newly hatched chick is the worst for me. Yeah, it took me a little bit to get used to that, but... Uh, That's something we didn't cover, Terry. Yeah, um, as far as culling chicks, um, I basically just hand decapitate them. It's about the quickest for me. I just, I just fulfilled the reptile order and the method. I don't, I don't actually do the decapitation. I just do it in one hand. Um, I place a head here and just push down, and it's instant. You, I just it just pops the head, but keeps the. It is that for take reptile it feeders? Is that Say for that a feeder? Is reptile feeders? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It was all in fact. Cool. I just did the delivery today on that. Cool. Uh, Jill's in the house. Says uh, good evening, everyone from South Missouri. Uh, Cooking Sherry says thanks for addressing this difficult topic. Uh, which BooTube, BoobTube doesn't like. Yeah, I've, I've had some people question me before on my butchering video uh, because I actually show how I, you know, dispatch the bird. 
Uh, and I did find out from YouTube that as long as you put up a warning, um, they're pretty much cool with it. You just have to pre-warn them that you know, they're going to see We did. That. We definitely covered that because it was four or five times before it happened. It yep. was done. And, it was and completely through the entire video. Yeah. Uh, Kiki says, I've seen this call method. Um, that's too rev. Uh, it's a fantastic way. Yep. Oh, thanks to rev. Sorry about that. She was one of the insiders, Terry, that had the first glimpse at it. Gotcha. And actually, uh, I'm not going to disclose. Uh, she, she'll mention it later what she did. So. Uh, Amber M says, I know culling a new chick will eventually happen, but I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, it's the hardest part of any of this. Yeah, they are kind of cute, but you'll get used to it, Amber. I mean, quail are, to me, I mean, they're really a bird with a purpose. You know, they're, some people do have them with, as pets, but mm -hmm. um, they really are a very uh, uh, good, sustainable source of uh, food and protein. So, yep. I agree. Uh, Naomi from Kansas City Quail says the same thing. She said, the quail work for me. They have a job on this farm and they yep. work for me, so. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's very that. well said. Yeah. Uh, Charles says, good evening. Dirty South Homestead says, exactly, death and dispatch is part of keeping any animals. I hate that so many people shy away or try to block that out. The thing I don't like about it is when I see animals suffering because people are afraid to put them down, um, I would much rather put an animal down, put it out of its misery. Absolutely. Or have, even if you don't do it yourself, Terry, if you have a friend that you can call immediately or something, sure. but it. it's just, you can't wait till something happens and then try to figure something out. That's that's the needless exactly. suffering that I'm talking about, you know? Um, yep. Uh, Z Strouds is Howdy from Texas, and Kiki has the perfect comment. Please don't let an injured bird suffer, guys, and it's suffering. That right there is perfect. Uh, Jenny says, I, I just can't. I need to, but I haven't been able to do the actual culling. Uh, it will come, you know. Test it out on, on a bird, like if you're going to butcher something, test out different culling methods on, on butchering birds. Uh, Chris Austin's in the house. Is he 15 minutes late? That's no problem. Texie 2022 says, question, would not draining blood be solely for falcons or hunting? Uh, I do it. It's not a matter of not draining the blood. It's keeping the bird intact. Um, the blood being for falconry, yes, definitely. Uh, you want to keep the bird intact. Um, for consumption, you want to bleed it out. And that's pretty much going to happen when you start uh, eviscerating or gutting out the bird. Um, that'll happen at that point. Yep. And the quail, it's not like they have cups of blood in them. So right. uh, there's very, there's very, I don't know, I, I, I never measured it, but I'm assuming what, they, maybe a half ounce of blood comes out, an ounce at the most. Yeah. There's there's not a large amount of blood that, right. that's in there. I've never measured it, but that's why I like do it using the scissor technique is yep. the heart pumps all the blood out. And Correct. by the time the blood stops, they're gone. In the yep. Kiki says the mini is watching with me. Okay. Her baby. So she's actually has her, her I, I guess she likes it enough and is comfortable enough that she's having her younger uh, uh, son watch it. So, I mean, I think that sure. that in itself it explains that it's not always as gruesome as it's made out to be. Yep. Um. Let's see, not talk to me. Bird Dog Quail Farms in the house says hello from Nashville, Tennessee. Glad you could join us. Uh, Mimi says, thank you for providing this video. I have no quail or chicken, quail or chicken, people who dispatch their birds. So this is the only way I can learn. Thanks again. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. If I can help one person out there, Terry, that's what it's for, you know? Oh, you help me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kiki says bump area. Yep. Kiki says all, bump area. So. The birds that you called, did you call uh, all of them in that method, or did you only do a few to try it out? Are you talking to me? Yes, I am. Yep. Uh, probably, I'll, I think I butchered 20, 21 or 22, and I used that technique probably on the first 10, just to make okay. sure that I knew what I was doing. 
No mishaps, nothing? Nope. No, I mean, the very first one, I just followed you the directions, you know, that you said, and it, it worked just fine. Good. Good. I'm glad. Uh, Kiki says, I hate the twitching. Can you please figure out how to make them not twitch? <laughs> I think this is the only method that I know of um, that I that has the less twitching. The only other right. thing, Terry, that and it applies to uh, um, chickens and stuff also, is have you ever taken one and done, how am I going to say it? A chicken, if you take the chicken and you swing it down into a hard object, you knock it unconscious. Have you ever dispatched a bird in that manner, like taking it and just bringing it down on something, knocking it out? No. Yep. Have you done that method at all? I've done that with quail. I used to sit, I had a concrete block sitting next to me. I would just grab them by the feet and whack their head against the concrete block. But I stopped you. I stopped doing that uh, when I got my really good shears. And uh, I did have one time where I missed the block. I kind of semi-missed it. So the yep. bird was still alive, and I had to go back and do it again. So, but when you did that, did they lose consciousness immediately? Did they twitch? Oh yeah, they yeah. still twitched even though you yep. rendered them unconscious. Okay, yep. I mean this this I think is that I know of. This is the only way that they really don't. Yeah, it's like you, like you put them to sleep. Yep. Yep. Uh, Carla says, "Is the person filming sick or crying?" The oh, sniffles. Yeah. Didn't I bring this up to you before we even posted? You did to me, yeah. Yep. I said to Terry, uh, just a little background info for the people. I said to Terry, I said, Terry, people are going to think I'm forcing my kid to film this <laughs> and he's crying in the background. No, uh, we're having really bad allergy season here. And uh, my kid's been, uh, both of them, and even myself at times, I've been struggling with it. It's been, even right. going to the doctors, um, it's been probably the worst year by far uh, for allergies. So I'm sorry. Um, right. I, I didn't know how to edit that out, so I just submitted the video the yeah. way it was. Yeah, it wasn't that bad, and I'm surprised they heard it, because I, I mean, I could hear it a little bit, but I didn't yeah. think it was that bad, so I didn't edit it out. Um, Jenny says, wow, I think this would be a better method. Thank you for teaching us. I agree. Dirty South Homestead says, oh, wow, thank you for sharing this method. I think that will be easier than cervical dislocation. I have to agree with that because I've had birds that I've done the cervical dislocation with and I either didn't do it right or didn't, you know, push down hard enough when I was extending their neck and I had to come back again, you know, and if you notice in the video, Terry, I've gotten in the habit with the cervical dislocation. I go back a second time on every single bird just, just to make to sure confirm. It's not that I didn't do it right the first time, and I didn't want people to think I'm like, once I saw the video, I said, it's just become habit now sure. that that's what I do. I go back the second time, because God forbid, um, yep. again, it's not about having the animal to suffer, so. Yep, I agree. Uh, Charles says, question, I have rabbits, and there's always crumbled food in the bottom of the bag. Can that be mixed with the quail feed so it doesn't go to waste, or has anyone used it in different ways? Thanks. Um, I don't see why you couldn't. I mean, it's it's alfalfa. Rabbits, a lot of yeah. the a lot of the rabbit cow, uh, crumble is all alfalfa. I don't know how that is for the. Or, I'm sorry. When I had rabbits, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how that would be for the quail. Yeah, I don't think it would bother them at all. But yeah. They're better than wasting the feed. Absolutely, especially at the Iron price Man of it now. Concrete pumping says nice. What a nice. What a calm way to cull. Absolutely. Okay, here we go. This is the question. Um, how exactly does the compression kill the bird? No bones break. What's killing it? Okay, so again, um, I believe it's just a matter of almost simultaneously you are compressing on the spine. You are sending the heart up into the lungs, compressing the heart and compressing the lungs. And it's done. I mean, like I said, keep a steady pressure and everything is done at the same time. You're not on the bird you're not trying to connect your fingers so you don't actually ever break the bones you just compress enough i think by the time you're said and done you're probably i don't know maybe three quarters of an inch terry half inch apart yeah. you never yeah. hear yeah. uh the cracking sound of bones breaking so um i believe you're just not rendering the bird unconscious and then holding it uh, that 15 seconds i'm gonna go with 15 seconds but if you count back in the video anybody that tries it hold the bird that long you can pretty much feel the bird 
just stop and lose everything. Um, at that point, I'd say you're safe to go. And and the thing is too is when you're doing it, you don't feel the bird like struggling at all. You know, no. like it's in pain or anything. So no. the, you see, from the, most from of the time, as you're compressing, the bird will come up, yep. and then it just drops down. Just yeah. That that's that's, that's how what I noticed. Every time, that's how I've seen it. It's not like you're seeing the bird struggle. Other than the bird struggles more than when you're trying to catch them in the cage than actually doing it. Yep. No, I think it's a very humane way to put them down. Okay, Sassafras Farm says, wait, so what is it doing for the chest one? I think we, I think she's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, who, who is that? Uh, something Farm? You're, it's, it's thoracic compression. You're compressing on the chest is what you're doing. You're essentially just stopping all the blood and uh, oxygen flow to the brain and uh, compressing on the spinal cord at the same time. I believe, and I'm not, I mean, I don't know, what biologists maybe break that down a little bit better, but <laughs> right. I don't know 100% what's going on, but that would be my guess on it. Okay. Okay, Don says, question, what, with this first bloodless call, can you then eat the bird if you process it afterwards? Absolutely, I don't see why not. Um, <laughs> I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to. I don't believe they're like, I. I've not, again, like I said, I shared this as soon as I could, Terry. So all I did was call for my falconry order, and I said, I've got to share this. We made the videos, and here we are mm -hmm. releasing it today. So I have not, uh, you guys are in the beginning of this also, I have not eaten any birds that have been called in this, uh, uh, in this manner. So I can't speak for that, but there's no reason why you can't eat the birds. Well, I mean, I butchered up 10 of them after using this method, so... We haven't eaten them yet, but uh, you know they're. Did in the they look fine? And... Was the meat all the same? Yeah. It's not like a, a blood laden meat. No, or anything. they were fine. No, no Perfect. bruising whatsoever. It just looked like uh, same as I do when I you know snip the head off. Beautiful. See, you're ahead of me. <laughs> uh, see, Kiki says good job, Rev. Sarah says, question: What is the failure rate for thoracic compression, and how much strength or force should be used? I, zero um, that I'm aware of as far as the failure rate if you're following the video um, again the amount of pressure like I said uh, just keep sorry I gotta get this with the camera this way here we go you're just gonna keep pressing and pressing and pressing until you see the bird react the bird press a little bit more after that the bird will likely lift its head and then it's just gonna go to sleep that's yep. and then hold it there uh, and you'll be good. <clears throat> yeah, of the so ten I did, I didn't have uh, any problems. No. Yeah, they, none of them came back to life or anything. They were all they were gone. So. How long were you holding them for? Fifteen seconds, maybe. Like you say. Was it? Yeah, it wasn't long. Uh, KM says I'm excited to learn the bloodless bloodless methods. Uh, when using for feeders, it would be great to keep more nutrient rich blood for the animals being fed. Agreed. Kiki said it wasn't bad at all. John Graves says, very good to know all methods. Freedom Quail Farms in the house says, hello. Cooking Sherry says, yeah, I definitely prefer the bloodless methods. <laughs> I mean, Cassie they're less gruesome, but. Yeah, I mean. And I, I could see where, once you start snipping the head, that's that's very, uh, uh, it's, it's really graphic and a lot of people yep. um, can't handle that. So hopefully this. Yeah. Can, yeah, and uh, I almost I almost didn't include that in the video, and I thought, but you know what? There's people out there that are going to want to do that in method. And I just wanted to show how fast and easy it really is. No, I think I think that's perfect, Terry, because I honestly think for butchering, mm -hmm. you're probably better off doing it that way, just to bleed yeah. out. I'm, They're and I might be wrong. Out. It might be just the habit from doing chickens for so many years that you bleed the animals out, and that goes with any animal. Yeah. So it might. I've be always just done habit. it that way, and the same when you're skinning them. Uh, you know, you, you, you split the uh, skin and then you pull it up over the neck, you know, so that yeah. you can't get it over the head. So, yeah. uh, Cassie says, I don't know about enjoyed, but it was educational. <laughs> <laughs> Kiki says, yes, tell us the damn story. <laughs> and <Andy>. I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you did tell us the story. She remembers that dumb game. Clinton Abrams in the house is hello from Tennessee. 
Glad you could join us, Clinton. Transmediapedia says, I feel the thoracic compression method prior to cutting the head off would be the kindest method for me. Thank you for sharing this. Yeah. I'm glad it helps. Kiki says, this is extremely exciting news for me because the twitching is what bothers me the most. Yeah, Kiki, I think uh, I think once you, uh, I actually think she's she's just starting to call herself. Oh, is she? Um, and uh, this, I think Kiki, once you try this and uh, you bring yourself to doing it, I think you'll find that this is uh, probably the easiest way. Mm -hmm. Here, here's a good one. It's not really a question, but essentially, Kimberly says, "I'm just afraid that I'm not strong enough to actually kill the bird." What gauge could we come up with, Terry? I mean, you're not really. You don't have. Um, oh. a lot of strength going into it so it's not like if you can push an egg together you're going to do it it's probably a little bit more than that uh, I don't know what would you use I, for I, comparison you're, it's not a lot I would think you know a 15 a 12 a to ball. 15 year old child you know a kid could do it no problem I think Terry if you took a tennis ball and you could squeeze a tennis ball I think yeah. that's about you think that's about yeah. right yeah, probably. Um, I don't know. I, I know it wasn't much. It didn't take a whole no. lot of compression to, to get the bird to sleep. Not at all. I can see it now. Farm? Somebody, but I can ahead. see it now. Somebody wants to try to do it, but they're afraid halfway through they injured the bird and they can't finish the job. So I could kind of see why they're asking that question. So. Right. Yeah, and when I started, I was unsure of, of how hard to compress. Um, so I, I think I started out a little bit lighter than I should have, uh, but it still worked. You know, it, yeah. I just I just kept pressing down. I got to the point where it looked like the bird was getting dizzy. I held it there, and he just went to sleep. Yep. Yeah. Sasquatch Farm says that was interesting. Would like to try the chest compression. I get dizzy and pass out when processing quail because of the blood and bone cracking sounds. It sucks, but I'm slowly getting used to it. <laughs> yeah, you'll get used to it. Uh, Gay says, question, do you notice any bruising of the meat when using the thoracic compression? I did not know. Terry, Terry, you would be the only one to answer that. I've never actually no. dressed out a bird after no. doing that. No, I didn't notice any at all. I'm glad you tried that. So now you're, I mean, you're answering some <clears throat> questions. I've got about it too. So. Well, I just wanted to make sure that I could do it. You know, it's... Yeah. Uh, Chris says, question, does this work the same for like Bob Whites and Gambles? I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, aren't Bob Whites, they're pretty much relatively the same size as as yeah. Coternix, right? Yeah. I, I don't see why it would not. Gambrels, I don't know. I have no idea what that is really. Uh, just another small quail. Okay. <clears throat> Marilyn says, like everyone else, I want to try the compression method. Everybody's going to run out to the barn tonight. <laughs> and start <laughs> killing their birds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Doug said, I would say a heartache. I would say a heartache. Have you tried to bleed them out after they're gone? I think he's saying he's thinking they're having a heart attack, which I guess is, it could be on the, yeah, probably oh, yeah, on the okay. right track there. Right. Um, yeah, when I, when I use the compression method and then I kind of cheated. I did the compression method. And then after they were gone, I cut the head off regardless. Um, yep. Not so much to bleed them out, because I think they pretty much bled out by the time I got done skinning them. But uh, I don't know. If, I don't know what actually what's killing them. You know, just stopping just the that, heart. I, I mean, you you've instantly compressed the spine, stopped the heart, and knocked all the lung, out of the, all the oxygen out of its body instantly. Right. And by, I mean that that would. I think that'd do it just for about anything, Terry. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Tony says hi from Toronto. Glad you could join us, Tony. Uh, Shelly says, hit the right button there. Uh, this was tough for me to watch, but I think it's important, even if you don't eat a single bird, uh, because what if one becomes sick or injured and there's nothing to do but put them out of their misery? Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. Amber says, I've never heard of this method. I love it. Uh, I butcher chickens and turkeys and eventually quail, uh, but always want to make sure I'm doing the most humane way possible with no suffering. Yeah, absolutely. 
And that's why I, I was really, when, when you showed it to me, Mark, I was like, no way. How did that bird just fell asleep? <laughs> it is. It's, it's amazing. I, yeah. I, it, I mean, there's nothing amazing about it, but it, it, I mean, I was happy that it just seemed to make it more, that, to make it easier and more peaceful and less yes, stressful exactly. on the animal and myself. I mean, what's, uh, yeah, it's gold. It, how, how can you, how can you not like it? Exactly. Because if, if you see me after I'm done butchering up a bunch of birds, I mean, I'm yeah. covered in blood. I, you know, I just, I snip their heads off and then I hold them. And sometimes I'm, you know, fiddling around with something else. Yeah. And I'm not noticing that it's going all over my feet and my legs, <laughs> you know, but. Yeah. Yeah. No, this way is definitely a lot uh, calmer. Robert Davis says, hello from Maine. LOL, 70 high temp today. Must be nice. Uh, Missy Rabbit says, question, do you cull quail with bumblefoot? I do. I don't know about Mark. Mark? Uh, I guess it would depend on the... I don't have quail before I was... Geez, if I could just spit out a sentence here. When I was keeping <laughs> the birds on just plain old galvanized wire, that would occur. Yep. Especially with jumbos. I think... I don't think you should house jumbos on wire unless it's PVC coated. That's just my personal opinion. The birds are so heavy. Yep. Um, and man, are you asking for problems if you do that? Standards, not really such a big deal. Right. Um, but uh, no, and they will actually recover on the, uh, recover on their own if they do have a small case of it. I usually treat it with blue coat mm -hmm. and uh, take them out of the situation. But if you're having bumblefoot, something is causing it. You have to find the problem. Yeah. Yeah, and I know it's. I mean, galvanized wire. It's got those little sharp points on it. And yep. if you're using the half by half, the manure doesn't always fall through. So they cut their foot, then they walk in the manure, it becomes infected, and they got bumblefoot. Um, and I haven't had, half, you know, like you, I haven't had a case of it since I went to the coated wire. The half by half wire, I'd, I personally don't think the quail should be on that. Just because mm -hmm. of the thin, how the gauge of the wire is so small, Yep. Um, I think that's a bad choice. Uh, yep. For chicks is one thing. If you're in a brooder, that's fine. But for full size quail, oh man. Um, it's just the gauge is too small for, for quail to be housed on full time. Yep. Um, but yeah, I always call, I mean, if I have bumblefoot, uh, one, it's an infection, it's a staph infection. So, yep. you know, you, you kind of want to get rid of it. But, uh, like I said, I haven't had that problem since I addressed the issue, you know, what was yep. causing it. Yep. Uh, Kiki says, Missy, you're not asking me, but I have never had a quail with bumblefoot. If I had a quail with it, I would probably cull because it is an infection. Absolutely. Cassie says, question, which method do you think would be the easiest for little hands if they should decide to help with culling and harvesting? I think she's talking about her kids helping her out. Yeah. Um, uh, she's talking little kids. I don't consider a 15 year old little kid. So if you're little kids, I think the quail pop is probably what do you think? Quail pop or shears? Quail pop. If you're going to quail do it pop is simple. Yeah, the quail pop is very don't easy. Stop, don't stop at the uh, uh, just this location. Quail pop. Tell them to pull as hard as wrap both hands and pull as hard as you can. Yep. Pull the head off, and I, yep. I think that's the best way for little guys if they're going to get on the quail pop too. Yeah, um, if you watch in the video, I stuck the bird's head up from the bottom in. Yep. Um, I talked to the guy that designed that thing, and he said you, you can also take them, put their head in from the top, and slide it back, and then it's yep. just a real light jerk, and it basically, you know, the head's pointing down, so you're you're yeah. snapping the neck right there. Absolutely, yep. Um, and it worked. The quail pop really works um, good for decapitating. Um, yeah. I should I should have showed that in the video, but I didn't. Um, That's what I'm saying. I think just for, a little I bit think for little kids. I think she was asking for butchering for little kids if they were to get involved. I think the quail pop and yep. pull as hard as they can, they'll get, they should get it no problem. Yeah. Uh, Jessica says, I like the idea of less twitching. My first dispatch I decapitated and dropped it in the bucket so I wouldn't have to feel the twitching. Uh, guess how I learned a headless quail can fly. <laughs> yeah, they can. And they, and they do that too. I mean, you pop the head off and that's what they, they want to flap their wings. So. It's a messy bird after, that's for sure. Yep. Uh, Dan says hello from Indiana. Sarah Bonner's in the house, says hello from North Louisiana. 
Charles says hello from Tampa. S. McKee's in the house. Says hi everyone from Eastern Washington. Uh, Freedom Quail Farm says question. I know we're on a quail discussion, but uh, I got some duck hatching eggs. <coughs> Excuse me. I was wondering if you had any tips on hatching them successfully. I've never done ducks, Mark. I've done ge I've done goose eggs. Um, uh, I don't know. I just turn them probably three, four times a day. If you don't have it, mark them and turn them three, four times a day. I mm -hmm. think the ducks should be, they don't do the cool down. I don't, I don't believe they that's do. That's what I was just wondering. I don't think so either, but that's what I was just I don't know it's wondering. needed. I don't believe it's needed for ducks with the cool down. I never did it with the geese anyways, and I, was, I did just fine. Yeah. Uh, and I think the humidity might be a little higher. Again, uh, I've never done it. Just some goose eggs. That's it. Okay. Uh, big dogs in the house is high from Missouri. Charles says, question, what do you do for fly control? How do you take care of flies, Mark? Uh, one thing that I've started doing recently is when I clean out my trays or my catch bins, right now they're getting sprayed with permethrin. Uh, permethrin. Permethrin. Um, and before I was using the indoor outdoor rate, and that really cut down a lot. Uh, I have the fly trapped or the fly sticky uh, tape, but the quail put up quite a bit of dander that those last for only a few days. So you, between that and the spraying, and keeping and drying out the poop. I've now got a fan blowing over it, as well as an exhaust fan on the backside. Uh, the air movement really helps a lot also. Yep. What do you do on your big cages? Is that the, the same, same as my shire, where you push the... Correct, the I actually use, it's a, uh, it's a squeegee, and it has a metal lip on it, so I'm scraping it out. I do, I push from one end to the other, okay. and uh, so I don't spray anything in there, but that's where the fan comes into play. Right. Um, yeah, I don't really have a uh, fly problem. Um, my birds are inside, I guess you would say. Um, yeah. And uh, I've got enough air movement through the shop that it dries the manure out. If you were to go to my barn for the amount of birds that are housed in there, uh, I think I think anybody would be quite impressed of the actual, um, the lack of smell, if you will. To house. And I actually have chickens in the barn too, so. Um, <laughs> right. It actually doesn't smell that bad there. Yep, cool. Uh, James says, uh, in here from West Central Georgia. Hello, everyone. Glad you could join us, James. Uh, Scott says, hey, guys, those two ways to dispatch are awesome. Thanks for the great info. Absolutely. Thank you. Shelly says, my name on Facebook is not my real full name. My YouTube name is my real name. I'm Shelly Bell on Facebook. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter, Shelly. I mean, it's... If you're talking about for the giveaways, whatever name that you used on Facebook or on Paternus Corner, that's the name that we call out. Uh, Mark says, or Robert says, Mark, have you eaten a bird dispatched this way? Question, taste, question. No, I have not. Like I said, this is, this is new. It's within the past week that I've learned it. And here we are uh, sharing it with you guys. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be any any different than you know decapitating them like i say i you know I, I did half the birds that i butchered using that method i used the other half i did with uh cutting the heads off and all the meat everything looked the same you know there's nothing nothing that was uh yeah. different or surprising gis herp says thanks for the new method i'll be testing it out really soon picking up meat birds and more new breeders tomorrow barbecue quail for the fourth i think that's what we're doing too but Terry, yeah. can you believe it that I've not had a bird since last year? I've not eaten any quail since last year. <laughs> I've got to, I've wow. got to have some here. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I keep processing them for everybody else and other people, and I've yet right. to have any myself this year. Yeah, we, me and my wife eat quail all the time. I've got to buy a new barbecue grill. My grill rusted out on me, but and that's my favorite way to eat them is barbecued. Jamie says, hi guys, we have 30 new birds. Hello from hot holiday, Florida. I feel you, Jamie, it's hot here too. James says, hello all from Florida. Just got my first egg today, so exciting. Congratulations. Freedom Quill Farm says, question, any tips on handling snakes getting into the brooder? Wow. The, I don't know how they're getting in. You're, you're, my guess is you have uh, the wire that you're using or openings are way too big. Yeah. You got to bring it down to 
quarter by quarter maybe. And I'm not saying housing the birds on. I think people put them on half by half PVC for a brooder. And mm -hmm. I think under that, uh, you're gonna need another quarter by quarter uh, wire to keep them up. Yeah. I've never had any issues. Wood, I don't, I don't have snake any, problems around here, so I don't have to worry yeah, about I, it. I mean, I don't have any, I don't have any snake issues, um, but that would be my way. I, there, there's a hole somewhere that you've got to find. Uh, Bird Dog Quail Farm says, had to dig a shallow pool, so my mini herpers had a place to cool off besides under the trees. Cool. I want some mini herpers. <laughs> Cassie V says, hi from Queensland, Australia. Glad you could join us. Got to be early in the morning there, huh? And Chris they're Austin also going says, into wintertime, I, Terry. Yeah, that's right. I, it's, I, it, it's hard for me to fathom that it's cold somewhere else, you know, with the exception of the North Pole or something. But. And, Terry, it is true. The water does go backwards in the toilet in Australia. My I've plumber heard was that. there, and I asked him. <laughs> I have heard that. Uh, Chris says, I used to get eggs and quail local in Los Banos, California. I don't know if I said that right. Shelly says, I agree with that taking care of sometimes. I agree with that taking care of sometimes means dispatching. Absolutely. Uh, that is why I made myself watch this. I just moved to where I can have them, and I think it's important to know how to call them humanely. I agree Shelly, I'm not. I hope this. Uh, I hope this helps you. Yeah, I do too. I'm. I'm sure it has, and I. Um, I'm sure we'll get a lot of uh, replays on the video for people that, you know, are looking up different ways of, you know, dispatching quail. Even on viewers tonight, I think we're doing pretty good, Terry. We are. We're like 142 right now. Even for boring old me. And me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't going to put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny B. Good says, "Howdy from the deepest, darkest tropical jungle of the jungle of the Mississippi Delta." Glad you could join us, Johnny. Uh, Chris Rose says, "That's awesome, Anna." Okay, talking to Anna. I don't know what Anna said. Uh, James S. says, "Hello, all from Florida. Just got my first egg from my birds today. Congratulations." This one's for you, Mark. Clinton says, "Someone doesn't look as shy as he said on Facebook." <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe not. Uh, I mean, I am. Believe it or not, in person I would be. But now, you know, I got the screen here, so I'm, exactly. it, it looks like I'm just talking to Terry. That's that's the way I look at it when I'm live. I remember the first couple lives I did, I was shaking in my boots. <laughs> I'm like, what if I mess up? And then I thought, what the heck? Just do it. Yeah. Iron Man Concrete Pumping says, uh, "What a way! What a what a way! Different way to dispatch." I think it's supposed to be what a different way to dispatch a bird than I was taught hunting. Hit it on the butt of your gun. There you go. Actually, uh, you don't even have to hunting. This is ideal. You don't need anything. Just grab the bird and press, and you're done. And if you're a good enough shot, the bird's dead when you shoot it. So yeah, I, I gave up bird hunting. Uh, they were yeah, laughing me at me every time I took a shot at them. So I gave <laughs> up on that. La Sierra Acres says, hey, everyone. Hey, Terry, I hope you all are doing well. Been pretty busy lately. Glad to make it today. Well, we're glad Thanks, you can sir. join us today. Uh, not talk about us. Uh, Tip J316 says, thanks for the video. Absolutely. American Grit says, you guys are awesome for sharing this info with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you are welcome, welcome, welcome. James S. says thanks. Chris Kaufman says hello from Ohio. Details Nails says I want pigeons. Hook me up. I could give you a guy's phone number. You can call him. Kiki says Queen Beaky. Oh, the Beaky. Okay. TV says thank you for this information. Chopergo. Chopergo. Hope I said that right. Hello from Colorado. Rachel M. says, hello from hot California, 108 today. Wow. Thank you, Mark and Terry, for these methods. I'm going to show my hubby the replay when he gets off work. You're absolutely welcome. Uh-oh, my ear fell out. TV says, question, can't find feed above 22% protein. What's the best way to add protein for chicks? 
What would you do in that situation, Mark? I'd just give them 22% protein, Terry, and don't cut it down with any type of treats. 22 right. is not, it's not uh, maybe not the ideal. So what? What's it going to delay, Gary? Two two weeks, maybe achieving max weight on your birds. Just give them twenty two. I would don't I would lean it. more towards a week. I don't yeah. think it has that much effect on them. Uh, but if you if you really need to bump it up, you know, you want it a little bit higher, you could use like fish meal. But I don't like fish meal because it stinks. Or any kind of soy meal will bump it up. Don't people don't some people grind cat food to increase the protein protein yeah, and all that? I've heard that. I've looked. I've looked at the protein levels in cat food, and it's only like thirty percent. So, yeah, you would have to grind up an awful lot of cat food if you if you were to you know add it to a fifty pound bag of chick feed. I wouldn't waste my money on mealworms either. The twenty two percent, you'll do fine. Just give it yep. to them and yep. go about your day. I've actually read articles where they say the birds do better on a lower protein uh, because they're not building up a fat fat stores so fast you know it's mm -hmm. like uh, keeping them lean and mean until you're ready to butcher them uh, there's definitely I've had a considerable amount of yellow fat in some of my birds that I've mm -hmm. gone way longer than I should have on the uh, which I don't mind for for consumption I think that's ideal I would yeah. keep them on a high because you want that fat in there yep. yeah I like fat on mine too Los Erica says 117 here in Yuma Wow at Dole Vegetables, I'm on a delivery. At least our customers gave me some cold watermelons. Cool. <laughs> Freedom Quail Farm says I'm in Yuma too. Uh, don't talk to me. Not talking to me. Kiki says I gotta go. I'm glad I made it tonight. Thanks, guys. Thank you for joining us, Kiki. Thanks, Kiki. Um, not talking to me. Texie says thanks for answering my question. Linda says, I have a soft heart and I cried the first time, but after a couple, I was fine. Do you know my wife will not, when I'm out butchering, she won't even come out in the backyard. I mean, once really? I'm done, you know, yeah, she she deals with all the, all the birds, you know, she cleans them up and washes them and cuts them up and everything. She just doesn't want to see me killing them or putting them down. Some people might not like it, but my six-year-old is involved in it. And my nine-year-old is involved. I, I was shielding them from it probably two years ago, but right. now have a, they don't have a problem with it at all. It's just a matter of life. That's all there is. Yeah. And when I, when I was a kid, I'm talking like, you know, six, seven, eight years old, my dad raised a lot of rabbits, and he taught me how to butcher, I want to say around eight years old. And I was I was the man that butchered all his, his rabbits, you know, that he wanted to put down. So. And I think it's a matter of showing them a good experience too. A bad experience will leave a bad taste in anybody's mouth. Yep. And I still remember when I, when you bring that up as being a kid, and um, in Canada on my uncle's farm, they had to uh, put down a calf, mm -hmm. and uh, it didn't go as well as they had planned. And I'll just leave it as that. And I still have that memory yep. in my to this day. Yep. Salvador Santiago's in the house. Says, "Hey, Terry and everyone, late, one hundred percent here. Glad you could join us, Salvador." The Steve B three 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 says, uh, "How to keep the Rue Grawl cage from beating each other up?" What do you do for your uh, your bachelor pad? Uh, I I said it to you too. I once I start seeing bad activity, I have the bands now. I ban my birds. Um, they get one ban the first time, second ban the second time, mm -hmm. third time. You're out. Thoracic compression. Yep. Well, on mine, now I don't really have an issue with it. I mean, my grow out is the aviary, and yeah. you know all the males are are going out there, so they're they're not around hens, you know, that are inside. Um, yeah, I really don't have no problem with them. I think I think yeah. maybe once, once this year I had, and that was my fault because I ended up I thought I had two, or I thought I had a hen and a rooster. It turned out it was both roosters. And I put them yeah. in, a, in a cage and. One was just an aggressive breeder, I guess. I, I, I definitely I definitely have some aggression, uh, especially in my fat feed lines. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm working at calling it. It's going to take some time. That's all there is to it. You, you know, it's funny is the fat feed that you sent me. Yeah. I, I noticed they, they are a little more aggressive, but not towards each other, towards me. Yeah. When, I, when I go to that cage and open the door, I got five birds <laughs> pecking my fingers. I'm like, <laughs> what are you guys doing? 
They do. My kids put their fingers in on the uh, on the cages, and they pass. Yeah. Nothing hard, but they're probably yeah, just wondering what's going on. Probably. Iron Man Concrete Pumping says, it seems to me that the kids have an easier time dispatching than most adults. I agree. Yeah. Well, once you're exposed to it, you know, it's it's not that. Okay, Grant says, question, good evening all. Woke up this morning and had to call seven weekend. Um, question, is there a CO2 method? Is that a good or bad or indifference? There is. I did it on some chicken chicks before and didn't really care for it. Um, I, I know, and I reached out to you the, this past week and I'm glad this came up. I'm actually looking because I have a customer that wants yep. a butchered bird for consumption with the head on. Right. And now when I do it, I do it with the head off. So I was struggling with a way of how to do it. And uh, right. it was CO2 and then it, <laughs> Go figure. I stumbled across. Uh, this was shown to me. Right. Uh, th this is going to be my go-to method for that. Yeah. Yeah, and, so and doing the CO2 method, I remember watching the chicks as they were dying. It was like they were they were gasping for air. You know, they would, yeah. I, I just didn't care for it. So. Jennifer says, hello from Alabama the Beautiful. Thanks for the info. Absolutely. Essentially, Kimberly says, what do you do with the heads after the scissor method? Just throw them in the garbage. Yeah, you can do that. Um, a lot of times I'll take all the entrails and the heads and everything, the bodies, and I'll put them in my compost uh, pile. And the uh, black soldier fly larva, they tear them up. Uh, if you can, find somebody that feeds rock dog diet and yeah. sell it to them. That'd be ideal. Yep. Jamie says, hey, from Holiday, Florida, we have 30 new chicks. Congratulations. Dirty South Home says, says, hey, Mark, try some goldenrod tincture. Is that for the bumblefoot? Goldenrod tin tincture. I don't know. I, I don't even know what that is, Terry. What is it? I don't know. I've never used it. <laughs> Dirty South um, Home said, can you explain I, that a little bit? Yeah, I think it, oh, for the allergies. Oh. oh, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, I don't know exactly what it is, to be honest with you. Goldenrod. Goldenrod's a plant of some kind, isn't it? I don't know. I you're gonna, Anna, that. you're going to have to help us. Me and Mark aren't too smart. <laughs> I try. Uh, maybe that's the problem. I keep trying land shark and Pinot Grigio. <laughs> and <it's> <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cooking Sherry says compost the heads. Yes, we do that. Amber M says I got to head out early. Thank you so much for the great info. I'll watch the rest later. Thanks for uh, joining us tonight, Amber. Appreciate your help. James in the house says, hey all, late arrival, moving to the new farm. Glad you could make it. Bird Dog Quail Farm, oh, talking to Clinton, says, I live on a 180, 180, or 150 acre farm in Eagleville outside of Nashville. Must be nice. Nice. I wish I had that much. That's exactly what Clinton said. Wish we had 150 acres. Yeah. Doug says, I wonder what people would think if they ended up like the headless chicken that lived Google it. I've, I've, I remember back in the day when we used to cut the heads off chickens and they would run around until they bled out. Yeah, I do. I make my uh, uh, I make my killing cones out of five gallon pails, and uh, I was telling you I use loppers now, bypass yep. loppers to dispatch yep. instead of the accent. Yep. There's guarantee no no failure method. Grant Harris says rabbit pellet crumble for quail may want to provide grit. To the quail since it's a green food. Huh. I don't know. I've Even never if it's used grit. That small. Yeah, I don't know. I've never used grit. You know, I mean, I give my birds greens all the time. You know, they seem to do okay. Uh, I thought the grit was like for grains, for help grinding up grains and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Dave says hi. I'm living in the UK and I'm watching quails. And I'm hatching quails. What's the best method for culling my male birds when ready? Is it scissors, pull, or pull and twisting? Um, uh, you just saw, if you go back to the first 10 minutes of this video, you just saw yeah. three, four different methods that yep. I think you'll find work out. And then you find which one works best for you. Yep. Yeah, that Jennifer says the same thing. Rewind the video. There's a clip that shows several methods. 
Uh, Kristen says, anyone getting nervous on the price of feed availability uh, to find? I'm not worried about I've, finding it right now. I'm worried about paying for it. <laughs> it's, I've it's actually doubled. feed, believe it or not, feed just went down for me. Really? Uh, for a bag, a 50 pound bag of starter, uh, what I used was $23 and change. I just went the day before yesterday and it was down 22. Not a significant really? amount, but at least it stopped going up. Yeah, um, it no, went down, down maybe 30, 40, 30, 40 cents a 50 pound bag. Yeah, the, the 30% Perina for me, the 50 pound bag is 26 and some change. The 40 pound bag is 23 and some change. So, I hate how the manufacturers play with that 40 pound bag and try to make it look good. That's a manufacturer right. I wouldn't buy from. <laughs> yep. They're doing it for that purpose and nothing else. Yep, exactly. Uh, Tim says, late to the party, have to watch the repay, replay. Uh, not talking to me. GIS Herp says, is there a rest period after cold before prepping for the table, driving one hour one way and want to take live birds and cull to prep on site or should I do it all beforehand? <clears throat> Are we talking about eating? What, what, what are you doing, Terry? Because I always, I usually process in a, in a large batch. So mm -hmm. I'll leave them in the fridge for at least 24, 48 hours before I consume them. So rigor mortis has passed yep. the whole way. Because I notice when I do my Falcon reorders and, I, um, and I'll call a bunch, if I don't get them in the Ziplocs fast enough, they're a pain to pack in there because rigor mortis has started to set in. Yep. Uh, I think you're always best letting them rest for 24 to 48 hours before eating, but that's just yeah. what I believe. I've I've butchered before, and I mean butchered, rinsed, and put them on the grill, and they weren't yeah. bad. I mean I don't think they ever had a chance for rigor mortis to set in, but um, yeah. you know I, I do the same thing um, when we take we'll butcher. My wife washes them up, bags them up, freezes them. We'll take them out, and they'll go in the fridge for usually 48 hours i like to yeah. put them in like a either a brine solution or vinegar and oil something like that mm -hmm. um and yeah they're good have you ever yourself have you ever soaked them in milk no but like i've heard of people doing that i've heard of people doing that i've done that with uh venison because apparently it's supposed to pull the gamey flavor out good. um and i've never i wonder with quail i guess maybe i'll try that sometime yeah no i've, I've never tried it but i have heard of people doing it um, Dirty South Home said wasn't talking to me. Laz says Quail Pop seems like a good alternative to scissors. Uh, it seems I'm always buying scissors because I lose them. <laughs> yeah. No, the Quail Pop works really well. I was surprised at how well it worked. Uh, Ludi Link, hi from Soldat Soldatna. Alaska. I know I said that wrong. Alaska. Cool. Glad you could join us. Yeah, that's neat. You don't see too many from Alaska. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer says the lack of blood flow to the brain would be the cause of death. Makes sense. Anna says, uh, hi, everyone. I'm glad I'm not too late. We're glad you could join us. What are we doing here on time? 830. Uh, tip J316. Hello from New Mexico. Thanks again for the video. Absolutely. Chopper go, chopper go. Uh, question: What size coated wire is best? What do you use, Mark? Half by one, no doubt. Same with me. And half I noticed the half, half by one fine. does not get dirty. It's like no. I used to have to clean my cages, you know, every month, take them out, hose them off, and everything. Yep. The half by one, I'm going on four months, five months now, haven't had to pressure wash them yet. Yeah, and my brooders, I use half by half PVC for that. Yeah. S. McKee says, one of my hens had a brutal case of bumblefoot and I treated it with J&J &J Jello bandages. She's fine now. Yeah, I've heard of people um, will actually cut the infection open and pull out uh, the infection, I guess it is. And or the corn, and then they'll they'll heal, you know, they'll treat it that way. But for me, it's just, I mean, it would have to be an exceptional bird for me to, uh, you know, try to save it. It's just as easy to put it down. Uh, 
not talking to us. Chris says, I use the hatching time breeder cages for quail. I have some of them myself. Uh, type of, that's not talking to us. Cassiopeia says, thank you. I did plan on getting the quail pop. My first quail go on lockdown tomorrow, so I have a little while to get prepared for that. Uh, Cassie will love it. Quail pop works great. To get prepared for harvesting, I'm okay with the other methods for myself if needed. Okay. Jeff and Amanda says, question. Earlier you talked about bumblefoot and coated wire, especially for the jumbos. Uh, how about with ground cages like a tractor? I got half by half uncoated wire to build more tractors. Thoughts? If for the walls, if you're running a tractor, you're not going to want the wire on the ground. I think some people are doing that to make sure that nothing can get up underneath it. Uh, you're going to want to do an apron it. because to me, when you have that wire on the ground, when you go to move the birds, you take a chance of trapping that bird in between the wire and the ground. Most of, I don't know, most of the time I've done any type of predator prevention is I do an apron to the outside so nothing can dig in. Gotcha. Um, never underneath like that. Okay. Yeah, I don't do a tractor, so I don't know. Uh, Mike says, hi from Wisconsin. I have about 100 quail and trying to hatch bob whites, but they seem to not hatch very well. Huh. I've never Am had Am I getting too dark here, whites. Terrace? It's getting a little bit dark, but I can still see you. Hold on, stay there. I can I can brighten you up, Mark. I paid the electric bill, Terry. I'm good. Yeah, I don't believe you. <laughs> Let's see. We'll put a little bit of brightness on you. Oh, wow. That's full brightness that I can get for you right there. Hold on. All right, grab a light. All right, I will jump to the next question. There you go. We got lights now. Yeah, the sun went down, so. Jeff and Amanda says, my local stores don't have the coated wire mesh. Does Tractor Supply? I could drive out there if need be. I don't know if Tractor Supply has it. I order mine online. I get it from uh, FencerWire.com or from uh, uh, Amazon. FencerWire has a, a thing on Amazon. Your I saturation. ordered the, first, the cheapest place I found it, and I'm cheap. I do when I do stuff like that. I found it Fencer Wire through Home Depot was oh, the cheapest you? place I found the half by one delivered to darn. my house. Let me know. Uh, Jeff and Amanda says I have one tractor built, working on two more right now. Any tips on tractors is appreciated. I have half by half standard mesh, two foot wide, two foot tall, and doing eight foot long and 10 foot long tractors. Actually, you know what, Terry, going back to, I don't know if this is the same one, but the half by half, if you're doing tractors on the ground, the birds don't really have all that pressure on the wire. So mm -hmm. I think I think in that it's situation, fun. they'll probably be fine. They're not bearing all their weight on just the wire. Right, and you're gonna I have think grass and stuff that. coming up through the- uh... Yeah, ab absolutely, yeah, they're not okay. right on it. I wouldn't use it strictly for cages, but uh, yeah, for your application, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, Valida says, I almost forgot about the live. As a newbie, I couldn't miss this. Glad you could join us. <laughs> Larson Farms says, I thought it said human dispatch. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Boy, I don't think YouTube would let that fly. Probably not. Uh, Scott says, I can tell from that devious laugh that Mark is touched. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I like to have a little fun sometimes. Oh, yeah. Question, I thought the rule was to keep quail cages under three foot tall or over six feet high tall. Um, that's what my prior research said. What's your thoughts on cage height? I'd say, I'd say keep it under 12, 16, 16, maybe 14 for uh, like jumbos. Keep it under about 12. Uh, is nice and over six foot. Three, I think you're asking, depending on what your roof material is at three feet, you, two, three feet, you're gonna ask for some potential issues if they get flush. Yeah, Here, here's the thing though on that, I don't think it really matters uh, because I've had birds, my cages, uh, my wire cages are 12 inches in the front, 10 inches in the back, and yep. my hatching time cages I think are 10 inches. 
and I've had birds break their necks in both them cages. So if, really? they, if they get, yeah, if they get spooked and they flush, jump up high enough, they're going to break their neck. Yeah. Um, I've never had the issues out in my aviary, but that's six foot tall. So James says hit the like button. Yeah, you guys can do that. Got 86 likes already. Any dislikes this week? Nope, I don't see any. Yeah, wait until, wait until the haters come in, Terry. It's a matter of time, <laughs> uh, especially on this topic. Here. Yeah. Amanda says, question for the giveaways. Is that just for the people that donate? No, actually it's not. It's for anyone. Uh, and the people that donate are donating for the kids. Um, I don't take any money for the channel itself. Or for me, the donation is just to buy incubators for the kids' giveaway. Uh, would Black Soldier Fly be considered a treat, or could it be used as added protein? Uh, both. They're, they're very high in protein. Angel says, you guys are anything but boring. I've loved tonight's topic and all the education I've gained this evening. Cool. We like that. Mark's the smart one. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, John Graves says, Northern Arizona for me. Shirley says, any great quail books you can recommend? I don't know of any, to be honest with you. Mark, you know of any? Mine comes out. I, I'm, mine should come out next week. There you go. He'll post it on his channel. <laughs> GIS Herp says, could possibly ferment feed to raise protein level a touch from what I've read. Huh, I didn't know that fermenting feed would raise the protein, but if it does, I guess you could do that. I, I haven't, I haven't actually... I thought that increased bacteria. It does. Good bacteria. Yeah, yeah, not the protein necessarily, but... Yeah, yeah that's what I, I... I don't know if it raises protein or not. I don't believe it does. Um... It's been a while since I've actually fermented feed for my birds. I need to get back into it because I did notice that when I was fermenting feed, I was going through a lot less feed than when I was just feeding dry. Yeah. And, but I think that's because they're taking in a lot more water, so they don't eat as much. Christopher says, I'm in Georgia, and the hot days I cut up cold cucumber or yellow squash and give it to the birds. They really seem to enjoy a cold treat on a hot day. Yep, I do the same, and watermelon. Mine love watermelon. Lennon's in the house. Says, Hello, everyone. Enjoying the cooler breeze this evening here in Alabama. I wish I could say that. Angel says, I butchered chickens with my 18-month-old in the carrier and my 5-year-old present through the entire thing. Yeah, I don't think the 18-month-old would mind. 5-month-old. Or five year old. Yeah, that's good for them. Good, good time for them to learn. Essentially, Kimberly says, My seven year old will be joining 4 H soon. He needs to know these things. I agree. Georgette says, My 10 year old granddaughter always wants to help, but her rabbit. Wants to help, but her rabbit and quail. Um, I don't know what, where we were going with that one, but yeah. Good for a 10-year-old to get out there and help you. Dan Nicholson says, Hi, all. How often do you feed the quail or is our feed 24-7? 24-7. Absolutely. Melita says, Before we purchased our eggs, I had my children watching all kinds of YouTube videos and came across one for processing. We had the talk and now they're excited. Good. Good for them. Bird Dog Quail Farm. Oh, they're talking to somebody else. Big Quail says hello from Massachusetts. Hey, my neighbor. Con oh, that's right. You're up there in uh, north northeast. Account dot loading error says off topic for the day. I've been been having real low hatch rates, twenty percent over many batches and in several incubators. Having trouble keeping the humidity over fifteen percent. Could this lead to later development pre pip? deaths um, that is kind of low on the humidity um, I would like to almost double that around 30 to 35 um, percent yeah I agree 30 percent low 30s for quail is ideal yeah uh, it almost sounds to me like 
they're pre-pipping. Next time, open up an egg, one that died in the egg, and look at the uh, um, the membrane between the chick and the air sac or the air cell, and see if he actually internally pipped. Because what might be happening is uh, he's actually suffocating inside the egg. But usually that happens from too high of humidity, not from too low. Um, yeah, I would definitely bump the humidity up for incubation, though, 30 to 35 percent. Where are they that it's so dry like that? I don't know. Didn't say. Uh, Georgette says, my 10-year-old granddaughter always wants to help butcher a rabbit and is learning about quail. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Dirty South Home says, this question, what is the minimum distance you would separate male and female enclosures to avoid aggression? Well, mine are outside. They're out of sight and out of earshot, so. I keep, mine are all together. Uh, and my males, they're all, I'm in stacked cages, so, and I've got a few, so if they're not they're not seeing the ones in their immediate above or below, but they're seeing them in the next page. So, right. Are you having issues with male on male aggression? Not, not really. There, there is some, um, but not, not, yeah. not a great amount. Those they get tagged, they get a chance, and uh, then they call. So, yeah. Living for Jesus says hello. I'm afraid I'm late. Not a problem. Glad you could join us. Christian says, good afternoon from West Texas. Susan says, what can I feed quail to keep the smell down? Um, I don't know. They stink if they, if you don't stay on top of it. But the higher, pro lower their protein as soon as you can. That'll help. Uh, John and Anita Garrett were on the show a few weeks back. And they, they have a, a formula, special formula that they created for their quail feed. And they said when they walk in, they can go like three to five days without cleaning cages. And they walk into a room no bigger than what I'm using. And he said it smells like, like earth. There's, there's no manure smell to it. Uh, but they're feeding a uh, non-GMO feed. And it's, it's specially formulated. Um, I, I, it'd be interesting to find out what kind of feed they're feeding too. If it's the budget-friendly feed or if it's the higher-end feed that has different um, he said it's, he said it's it. pricey he said their feed yeah. is, is pricey but he yeah. said it's worth it so no but I said that the person asking the question with oh. this, are they buying the cheapest producers pride at tractor supply or right yeah you know, that, that would probably do it yeah yeah because I noticed um, like my chicks they're getting the Perina 30% game bird starter yeah. and their manure smells I mean they stink once I get them transitioned over to the layer formula, the 16% uh, yeah. uh, layer feed, it doesn't smell near as bad. Mm. So, This is a good question. I would love to figure this out. Uh, Hazy Bees Honey says, any pointers on deboning quail? Is it similar to chickens? Have you ever done it, Mark? No. Nope. Um, uh, de de deboning in the raw, I'm assuming? Deboning, like in you know, the, in its raw form. Yeah, when when you're butchering, yeah. I know who does that. Well, he's not really deboning; he's debreasting. He takes only the breast, and that's Chris from uh, Slightly Redneck. But somebody, um, who was it? I think it's it's a little Asian woman. She shows how to debone quail, and it didn't. I mean, to me, it looked like more work than it was worth. But she, she did it pretty quick. You know, and yeah, a nice I, I flat piece once of you, meat. Once you, if you're going to debone the legs, that would be the only other thing. What are you going to, once you take the, once you cut the breast out, um, right. you're pretty much, you debone the, the quail. I, I, I don't debone, I like the whole thing. So I actually, we, we spoke about that too. The legs are actually uh, a better taste than the breast meat, I believe. So I think so too. I love the legs. James says CO2 is a panic gas. Nitrogen, they just fall down. There you go. Uh, let's see. Jeff and Amanda says, hmm, one tractor is done and occupied. The next two are framed and ready for wire to be attached. I guess if our quail jump up and snap the neck, they'll go to freezer camp. 
or our dog. LGD dog. What's an LGD? Large dog? No. I don't know. What's an LGD dog, Mark? Go to their large dog. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Living for Jesus says my 10-year-old son wants to learn to process quail when we get them. Best time to learn, I think. Aha. Here we go. Goldenrod. Dirty South Homes has said yes. Goldenrod's a plant. A tincture made from it will help with allergies. Check Etsy. It's goldenrod infused into a high <laughs> into a high proof alcohol. Alcohol. <laughs> there you go, Mark. High proof alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, account dot loading here says Animal Lab Tech here. CO2 is considered inhumane in the lab industry. Uh, when you hold your breath, the feeling of suffocating is actually due to excess CO2. Uh, CO is humane but dangerous to work with. Okay. Don't know anything about it. Yeah, I don't. I don't really have any interest in doing any of that. So, right. um, good explanation. Uh, living, of it. living for Jesus says for allergies, equal parts raw apple cider vinegar with the mother in it and local raw honey take two tablespoons or two every morning and evening there you go mark i don't have allergies uh, the, lo issues, so. the local honey i do i do have and that goes in the, uh, i do have that on english muffins but uh no no apple cider vinegar for me sorry <laughs> clinton says mark try jagermeister instead of land shark lol oh good lord i can't do that i can't talk to him <laughs> can we block that individual here? can we block him yeah we'll get rid of him <laughs> uh details knows i'll take that phone number for pigeons thanks buddy uh the only thing is uh he's in florida he does not ship so if you're not around here uh it's probably not going to do you a whole lot of good Don says, I'm using 28% game bird starter, but it's in a 40 pound bag, $17.99. They don't offer 50 pound bag, no choice. But still, your, your 40 pound bag of game bird starter is like $5 cheaper than what I'm paying for a 40 pound bag. Uh, Iron Man Concrete says, I soak catfish with buttermilk. Yeah, we've done that too. Uh, okay. Up north when we were fishing. So I do, uh, farm says, calamari do gets soaked in calamari gets soaked in uh, buttermilk before cooking. That's the only thing I do. Okay. Sassafras Farms says, question: What's the best method you use to clean the birds? Uh, I have just been butterfly them and, along the spine and then cutting up the lungs. Cutting that's pretty much it. I've got a video on it, but uh, that's pretty much what I do. I just uh, okay. I run them through the plucker. I Yep. Cut up the uh, the butt alongside the spine on each side, rip it out and clean the inside. Done. Cut the feet off. Oh, really? You you, you take the spine out when you're? Uh, yes. Even when you see, I don't do that. I when I'm using the plucker, the bird is whole, just like a chicken. Um, yep. I use one of those uh, spoons with a slot in the middle and clean the guts out. And it works pretty good. I mean, I haven't had no problems with it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, it works good. You got. You really got to be aggressive when you go into it, but you know it, it brings everything out. Stick the spoon in, twist a couple times, scrape around the cavity, and, and everything pops right out. Dan says, "Am I the only one from Australia?" Uh, I don't know. I, I know we had somebody in earlier, but I don't know if it was you or not. Robert Davis says, uh, "Old timers use buttermilk to soak birds. The enzymes tenderize them. That's good to know. I'm gonna have to try that." Bird Dog Quail Fan says, sorry, got to go. Barbecued quail, habanero cheese, rice, fried okra, butter, beans, and blackberry cobbler. Wow. Nothing well, like that bacon. That seems like a lot of stuff. Yeah. Hope to hear you Friday. Uh, no, we're not going live on Fridays. Probably until the end of July. Still got a lot of work to finish up on these websites. Gay says, CO2 works well for rodents, not for birds. Birds have hollow bones with air sacs. Essentially, the lungs extend through throughout the bones. Wow, harder to asphyxiate. Huh, I've never heard of that. Living for Jesus says, where do I find good info about a tractor for quail? Uh, check any of the Facebook group pages, you know, pose your question there. I don't do use a tractor, so I don't know. 
Jay says, where can one buy the quail pop? Um, Jay, if you go to the video that I did on the channel here with the quail pop, uh, there is a link in the description to the guy that makes and sells them. Or go over to the Facebook group page, Caternix Corner. Uh, he's a member there. He can help you out. As a matter of fact, uh, go to ccfarmmarket.com, our uh, classified site. He's got an ad on there for them. Alita says rolling blackouts on YouTube. I wonder where, wonder where you're at where you're having blackouts. I haven't had any. I just, I just had to reload mine, Terry. Really? Yeah. Huh. I haven't had no issues yet. Um, Iron Man Concrete Pumping says Fencer Wire has a discount code. I wish I had it back when I bought my wire. So I spent a lot of money on it. Speaking about lighting, glad Terry got a white chair. He would look like a floating head. That's actually not a white chair. That's a pillow behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> my back gets sore sitting in here. Uh, James says, fencer wire available at Home Depot and Lowe's. Selection may suck, though. Don't forget the vet's discount. Our case says, get live stream. Casey Babson says, made it. Dinner's at 7, so it's hard to jump in. You're going to have to eat dinner while we're live. RK says, great live stream. Amanda says, thank you. I love the show. Ron's in the house. Says, hello from Arkansas. Got to get these questions, guys. We're getting late here. Going on 9 o'clock. Uh, Robert Davis says, books on Kindle. Amazon books. There you go. Uh, KM says, I've been adding my kombucha Gobi to my feed. Um, it does bubble more now. Okay. Yeah, I don't add anything to mine when I, I just add regular water and it takes a little bit longer to start the process, but it works fine. Um, Josh Rubite says, are the hatching time cages big enough for jumbos? Um, if you're going to do jumbos in the hatching time cages, I would get the, uh, the partridge flooring. Um, that's going to work the best. You won't have uh, near as much manure buildup and you can I've got jumbos in there right now four birds uh, per unit and they're doing just fine Jay says fermented feed makes nutrients more bioavailable it does not increase the percentage of protein protein percentage okay Chris says yes the hatching time cages are just make sure you order them, ask for the jumbo quail floor. Okay, I think I just said that. Misty says, question, how do I keep ants out of hutches and feed? You have any issues with ants, Mark? No, I don't. I, I do would uh, I would spray the perimeter with yep. something or put a granular down. Uh, if you spray the perimeter, I would think you'd be fine. I don't have any issues with them in the barn. GoPro Arizona says, hey guys, from hot Phoenix, Arizona. Saw the video title and thought I'd share a funny dispatch method. We have cage jumbos and free range jumbos. Once in a while, my Mastiff get an early dinner when a dumb quail jumps into the dog side of the yard. Uh, it's <laughs> nice because I don't have to do any butchering uh, and it weeds out the quail. No more survival instinct. <laughs> uh, Doug says that chicken without a head lived we're not sure how they took it around to the fairs, but it was a true story. Huh. Uh, Jeannie says, thanks for hosting this. I had no idea about the thoracic compression. Uh, this may be my preferred method for dispatch, followed by decapitation. Our quail eggs are going into the incubator in five days. Congratulations. Good luck on the hatch. Uh, LGD is Livestock Guardian Dog. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, everybody knows that except for you and me, Mark. We I guess so. And I've got dog. one too, Terry. Well, he's a mutt, <laughs> but he's he's part right? Pyrenees, so. Uh, let's see. Everybody says the same thing about the dog. Jenny says, I'm new to quail, so I haven't seen it yet. Uh, with this bumblefoot disease, you have to call the bird but can't eat it. Uh, can you feed it to animals or just got a discard? Um, no, I've actually butchered birds that had bumblefoot. Um, and never had an issue with it, but just like I say, it is a it is an infection. So try to keep it away from the meat if you can. 
Bird Dog Quail Farm says Homestead Harvest, I believe, makes the feed for Kansas City Quail. Okay, I think we were talking about um, Anita Garrett of AJ Farms, but and I think Homestead yeah. Harvest is the feed they use, isn't it? Didn't did you watch I, that I, one, Mark? If I if I remember correctly, that was the name. Correct. Yep. Uh, Homestead okay. Harvest. Yep. Details Nail says I'm in Holiday, Florida. Okay, there you go. Might have to make a trip down to Fort Myers. Crib Quail says hello everyone. Sorry for being late. There was a bit of a storm here. Uh, there's the website address for the. Uh, classifieds Shelly says you guys have learned a lot of stuff I didn't want to know but definitely needed to know thank you so much absolutely Iron Man concrete pumping says 10 off oh 10 percent off of the thing all right guys I think we're pretty much done I'm just gonna look for questions yeah we're pretty much done <clears throat> so cool uh, Dave says, and what gauge wire is the best? I think the stuff I'm using is 14 gauge, if I'm not mistaken. 16 and so. 14. Yeah. You start running into 19, you're getting really... Uh, yeah, it's pretty thin. Yeah, 16 or 14. Feet. Okay, cool. All right, so that brings us down to the bottom of the question. So I know everybody is waiting uh, to find out who the winners are of the uh, uh, giveaways tonight. Uh, but before I announce the winners, I just want to say if your name is announced, um, I need you to send me your information. Uh, you can either email it to terry at paternixcorner.com. I need all your shipping information. I need a good email address and I need a good phone number. Um, or you can message it to me over on the uh, caternixcorner.com website if you are a member over there. So, the first winner of the night is going to get the Northwest Quail Farm. You got your choice of the watering system or the quail egg starter pack. And that is going to, I know I'm going to say this wrong, Zeron Stroud. It's Z-E-H-R-O-N Stroud. Um, oh, and, and everybody that won, um, you are going to get uh, a message from me. Um, notifying that you that you won uh, the winner of the $50 hatching time gift certificate is going to Casey Babson Casey same with you shipping information uh, Casey really uh, the only thing I need from you is um, a name and a good email address and I'll forward that over to uh, hatching time and the winning the winner of the hatching eggs from Southwest Gamebirds these are celadon hatching eggs is going to Danny Flesher, F-L-E-S-C-H-E-R. I hope I said that right. So, Danny, same with you. Uh, full shipping in information, good phone number, and email address. Okay, so that's pretty much it for that. Um, I want to thank everyone who joined us tonight. Thanks for all your great questions, guys. Uh, thanks for all the likes. Thanks for just showing up the channel. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome anytime. anytime. we got to get Kiki in here. Yeah. I don't know. Twist her arm if you can, man. <laughs> I don't know. She's uh, a little grumpy. Yeah, I know, but we'll get her next time. Um, my moderators, thank you very much. Anna, uh, Amber, appreciate both of you guys being in here. Uh, next week, don't forget, Tuesday, we are going to be announcing the winner of the Caternix Kids Project. Um, so if you have your kid entered, um, we don't have anything that's going to be considered... Uh, like tonight so it won't be uh <laughs> it won't be anything you got to worry about your kids watching so have your kids in there we will be announcing the winner next week tuesday and the following week on the 12th chris Carnes is going to be here from slightly redneck so again guys thank you very much i appreciate it and we'll see y'all next tuesday